Okay, now we're coming to Shavuot. You're taking this passage and you're using. You're you're saying you're saying you're treating this as if it's the first day of the month. Of the third month. Okay. When you do this, this when they come out, and this is on that very day. Okay. Bayom Hazeh. On that very day that they came out of Egypt. The day they came out of Egypt was the 14th day of the month, not the first. It says, Bayom Hazeh, right there. On the same day of the month. They come into the wilderness of Sinai. They're not in the land. This is really important. They are not in the land. They're in the wilderness of Sinai. They have already been traveling. Okay? This is really important. In the third month after they left Egypt. On that very day. Okay, so you got the 14th of the first month. There's 16, or you want to call it 17 days after that to finish out the month. Then there's a second month. It's you're calling 31 days, I'm calling 30. Okay, so 31 and 17 is what? 17 plus 31 by your reckoning. 48. That's why you're thinking, oh, well, the third day is 50. It's not 50, it's 51. Okay, because you're counting 31 days in a month. If you want to get it to 50, you would have to go on a 30-day month. 14th is when they, well, 15th, they are leaving on the 15th, so you're going to count that. So 15, so you subtract 14, so 30 minus 14 is 16 days, plus 30-day month, not 31, is 46. So if we were going by your accounting with the, counting the third day of the third month okay the day that they assemble remember they're doing it on the third day okay the third day begins at sundown so you're looking at 30 day months where at sundown because the 49th day remember 49 46 plus 3 right third day of the month by your accounting that would be 49 at sundown becomes 50 at sundown you eat if you're trying to talk that that's the Shavuot the 50th day if you're trying to count it there I submit you cannot do that and I'm going to show why first reason why is that that he's talking about this isn't the third day of the month Okay, because the third day, the, the day they come out is the 14th of the month. So you got 14, so that's six, 16 days in Aviv, plus, plus 30 days, not 31, because you can't even get to your number with 31, is 46. That's the end of the second month, not the third yet. But they're saying they came, they're, they're in the wilderness of Sinai. They are not in the promised land. They're in the wilderness of Sinai. On the very day of the month, the month that they had come out of Egypt. By Yom Hazeh. Okay. So, now added to 46, you're going to add 14. That's 60. Whoops, we're overshot the field here. We're not at 50 anymore. Okay, and then you add 3. And now you got 63. 63 is a very prominent number in the meter. Okay, 63 is used by Moses to indicate um, the Exodus in particular in um, Psalm, 100, Psalm 90 verse um, 4. First, his date line. He's saying he's writing 441 years after Israel was, you know, um, enslaved. 
and he uses 63 to show that 63 sevenths. Okay, because he's using sabbatical accounting in his meter, like all the other writers do. Okay, so 63 is really important, and you'll notice that that ties really well. 63 days after they left Egypt, Moses is still alive. He hasn't written Psalm 90 yet. They come to the wilderness of Sinai. They're not in the land. Shavuot is celebrated for being in the land, as I'm going to show. They're not in the land. This is not applicable to Shavuot, this verse. And the count is wrong. It's 63. It's evocative. It ties back to Egypt. It's the meter that he's using um, in Isaiah, um, not, I mean, Psalm 90, verses 1 through 4, verse 4. Verses 3 and 4, rather. 63 syllables is the first time that the, the um, syllables are divisible by 7. 63 sevens is Moses' dateline. It's a rhetorical style that all the writers use, that Christendom doesn't know anything about, and I guess Judaism forgot about it. All right? 63, not 50. You got that. Second reason why, as I just finished saying, they're not in the land. Shavuot has to do with being in the land, as I'm going to show in a minute. They're not in the land. They're in the wilderness of Sinai. So you can't use Exodus 19 as the count for Shavuot. You can't. So now let's go look at that. You got Leviticus 23 that you also call talk about in the video. Okay, Leviticus 23. On the first day, this is talking about Passover. Okay, see? First day, you have a holy convocation, no work. Passover 15th begins piggybacked on the 14th. But for seven days, you present an offering. That's the whole week, not the first day. First fruits is next covered right here. After seven days, not after the first. And it's when you enter the land that you start to celebrate the Shavuot. Not before. Okay? Now look. So. First fruits begins piggybacked after Passover. It does not begin the day after the first day of Passover. See, seven days. Then you're talking about this. And it doesn't even start until when? Until you enter the land. So Exodus 19 is when they're in the wilderness of Sinai. They're not in the land. So Exodus 19 has nothing to do with Shavuot. There's a sort of maybe the fact that both are happening in the third month. You can play with that, but the number of days is not 50, it's 63, or if you want to add your two days, it's 65, which doesn't make sense. And they're not in the land, so it can't have anything to do with Shavuot, and it says, this is what you do when you enter the land. So they're not celebrating Shavuot in Exodus 19, they're not in the land yet. It says here, when you enter the land, you do this, not before. See? And then look, 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 look. Until this same day, you eat no bread or roasted grain or new growth. They were living on manna in Exodus 19. They're not living on the produce of the land. They're living on manna for 40 years. So there is no first fruits because there are no crops. So Exodus 19 is not the right passage to use when you're trying to talk about Shavuot. Doesn't work. Sorry. The text is, is right here. Contradicts. From the very passage that's being quoted in the video. Alright? You bring in the first fruits. You do it after the Sabbath. Okay? In the, in the year Christ died, Passover, official Passover, not what should have been Passover. Official Passover ran Saturday to Saturday. So the final day of Passover week, when First Fruits was supposed to start, began just after a Sabbath. It was a Passover Sabbath, and it was also a Saturday, a regular Sabbath. 
So that's why Christ is called first fruits. You call him Messiah, we call him Christ. It's the same meaning. The, the, you know, Jews wrote the New Testament too. Hello, in Greek. Okay. So, the day after the end of the Passover is first fruits. By definition, because Passover is always the ending day of Passover is always the Sabbath. See? First day, and on the seventh day, you don't do any work. So it's always, always at sundown of the last Passover day is first fruits. Because it's always the Sabbath. Okay, now, what happened when they did enter the land? Well, that's in Joseph. I'm in Joshua. Okay, am I still recording? Yes, I'm still recording. See? Sons of Israel walked 40 years. This is Joshua 5. Okay? Blah, blah, Joshua 5. Okay, now we come up here. They came in to the land. They had to be circumcised. The Lord re rolled away the reproach of Egypt. That's why it's cleverly called Gilgal. Gilgal, of course, means foreskin. Christians would have a conniption fit if they uh, understood just how witty the Bible is. Okay. Um, but anybody who believes in Christ is a Christian by using the Greek word or a Messianic if using the Hebrew word, okay? And the separation by language is not good. Okay, on the day after Passover, on that very day, they ate the produce of the land. Got that? Now the question is whether this is talking about the Passover day on the 14th or the ending of the Passover on the very day after the ending of the Passover they eat the produce of the land. I submit to you the Hebrew is dual entendre. The manna ceased. See, so for sure we know Exodus 19 does not apply. It is not about Shavuot. And for sure Shavuot was supposed to be started when you enter the land and the priest has to wave his sheaf and day after the Sabbath, which is the last Sabbath, after the seventh day, seventh day is the Sabbath, so the next day he waves the sheaf. That's first fruits, just like the Bible says in the New Testament. Okay, well, we got this problem here. If you say it was the day after Passover, the first day of Passover, that they ate the land, then they're not observing first fruits the way they were supposed to. See, look, until he waves the sheaf, until he waves the sheaf, you're not allowed to eat bread or roasted grain. Okay, and it takes place after the Sabbath. Okay, well, hello, that would make it the middle of Passover week if you're trying to interpret Joshua as saying here, first day of Passover. The first day of Passover is a Sabbath, the last day of Passover is a Sabbath. Okay, where is there any recording of any priest waving a sheaf? None, zero, see, look. They ate it. Doesn't say anything about waving a sheaf. Doesn't say anything about the account of the Omer beginning at all. Okay. Now, the one, two things are true. They're either in violation of the law here in Joshua 5, which I highly doubt, or this means after Passover week. Because back here in Leviticus, Passover week has to pass before the priest can, sh can wave anything. See? Seventh day is right here. 
So this begins after the seventh day and has to be waived. And you can't eat any parched grain until he does that. Okay, well, if he did that, he did not do it. He did not do it on the day after. He did not do it on the day after the first day of Passover. The whole week is sacred for one thing. Okay. Secondly, they're eating unleavened cakes and parched grain. You see what I'm getting at? The count doesn't work. The math doesn't work. This event has to happen after Passover week passes. So that this event, they after Passover week ends, then they eat of the produce of the land. You see that? That means that the priest would have done his job on the right day, which is this, the last day of Passover is the Sabbath. Just after that, he does his waving of the sheaf. And then they eat the produce of the land. That fits together poetically, mathematically, and it fits the law. So it is not possible to say that Exodus 19 is referring to Shavuot at all. They're not even in the land. The whole holiday, the whole institution of the rule hadn't even been put in place yet. There's one final thing I want to show. And this to me is the... Let me get rid of the window. <coughs> Excuse me. Numbers 28, 26. See, here's the day of first fruits. When you present the grain offering, you don't do any work in the, in the 50th day. And he's talking about accounted back from first fruits. Okay. That. <coughs> excuse me. The context of that is the end of Passover again, just like it is in Leviticus 23. See? This has to do with Passover. See? There's Passover. Ends on the seventh day. Piggybacked onto it at the very end is the day of first fruits. That's why Christ is called first fruits, and that's why the timeline in the New Testament, which is written by Jews, okay, except Luke, and he might have been a Jew before, convert. Hello. First fruits is following after. All right? Now, I can't help it if some Jews in the past couldn't count and are doing it the day after Passover, but Bible doesn't agree with them. All right? Numbers 28, tw Numbers 28, 26 makes it clear that it's after the seventh day. That ties to what happened with Joshua if you interpret Passover here to mean after the, on the day after Passover week on that very day. Yeah, it's the same solar day. Passover week ends at sundown. So it'd be the same solar day. And yeah, they could eat some of the produce of the land if at sunset the priest had waved the sheaf. And they they couldn't work. Right? So he's got to wave the sheaf after Passover weekends. I mean, it's really obvious. You know, it's just that here's the beginning of the week, and that's what's confusing in English. And here's the ending of the week, on the day after Passover week. Because the word Pesach is used for the whole week as well as for the day. And then the man is ceased. And God doesn't say anything here about them being in trouble. He also doesn't say they wave the sheaf. But this text ties back to Leviticus 23 that says until you brought the offering into your God you can't eat bread or roasted grain. See they couldn't even eat the Passover. You're with me on that aren't you? 
they couldn't eat even unleavened bread. Okay? They had the, they ate manna until the Passover ended. That means their Passover was with manna. Whatever they made out of the manna. The day they ate that roasted grain, it stopped. Well, but Passover intervenes in between. And what do you do on Passover? You don't do any work. First day, last day. So, where'd they get something to eat? The day after they eat. Okay? And it's when they get into the land. So I guess your biggest, the biggest sort of conundrum about this is the interpretation of this. Is it on the day after Passover week? I submit the answer is yes, because that fits the law. That fits Deuteronomy 28, 26, which I showed you. It fits um, Leviticus 23, which I just also show right here. And it fits um, what actually happened. Because they're camped. They're, they're hurting, okay? They're not working. They're camped at foreskin. Gilgal. They're not working. The manna ceased the day after they had eaten some of the produce. Day after, okay. So, after the Passover, after he waves the sheaf, because they're not allowed to eat any produce of the land until he waves the sheaf. That's Leviticus 23. So after Passover, they eat the produce. That's after Passover week. This is the start. This is the terminus. And the manna ceased the day after that. Yeah, Passover week ends. The, the sundown At sundown, that's first fruits. He waves the sheaf. Now they can eat the produce of the land because they're in the land. And then the manna ceases on day after they'd eaten that produce, which was really the same solar day at sundown, because that's the new day. And that's when you eat your closing Passover meal. So he's waving the sheaf, and then they eat their closing meal to commemorate the fact they're in the land it's new. It all ties together really well if you recognize that this is talking about the end of Passover, not the beginning. Okay, and then of course there's another story to tell about this. You know, hi, the land is now sacred, angel of the Lord, but you already know that. Okay, so in no event is Exodus 19 an issue. Okay, I, my mouse is hanging up, so I'm going to quit now. In no event does Exodus 19 match that story. So you can't call the third of Sivan Shavuot. Okay, signing off. Oh, tell me, I, I've still got, yeah, signing off.